Hey guys, Mandy here with Team Tyree. We are going to be doing a baking day today, so come on along on our journey. to share with you guys is my milling books. The main one I use is this guy right here which is so well used that it actually is missing its cover. So you can see the pages are very darkened and but I've got lots of notes in here that I just don't want to lose. So I keep using this one even though it's splattered with food. But the cover basically looks like these red books. This particular one is only six dollars and I will leave it down below and it basically is everything I do. Um, Bread, and Breadbecker sells it. The Breadbecker also sells these other four books too, which I have, which are kind of a collection of other people's dishes. And they submitted it to Breadbecker's and then they kind of made little books. So there is one, like I have a birthday cake recipe in one of these guys that I use. Other just things, they're not just breads, they're also, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but there's desserts and just lots of fun stuff that other people have created and they put it together. Sue Becker, which is like the main lady I follow for milling, she actually wrote this book. So if you are interested, probably a great place to learn. Also, she's got tons of videos online on their website. They do classes all the time, which are pretty cheap and super fun to go to. Here's another one that she loves and another one here that she loves too. I've got all these from her store. The main one, like I said, I use is I just use her basic. I think it's $6, something really cheap. Yeah, I lost the back end too, sorry. <laughs> Can't show you, it's not red anymore. This one has your basic bread, it has your rolls, it has your pancakes, your cornbread, your cookies, just everything you wanna do that is from milling. A while back when I first started milling, about seven years ago or so, maybe more, I, would try to bake one thing in the morning every day because I just had little kids. Let's see, Joseph was like three and Olivia was one and we just kind of had a very toddler, preschooly, you know, a simple morning with just the little ones. No big ones, no homeschooling to do yet. So I would try to just make one thing in the morning and that was kind of how we got by with our baking. And then as time has went by, that has stopped working because there's just so many needs from me in the morning with getting teeth and hair and getting homeschool underway. And so what we've kind of went to now over the years is we do a once a week, well, I would like to do it once a week. I've kind of fallen out of that habit. So sometimes it turns into once every two or three weeks and then it's like a mega baking day. So today's a Saturday. We're not doing homeschool today. Instead, we're gonna do a whole bake morning or it kind of turns into an afternoon. And then that kind of helps too with lunch is because lunch is already planned. We just eat whatever the bake day creates. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what we're going to make. I usually just jot some ideas down, things that are kind of used up from the freezer on my meal planning thing and then kind of pick and choose. I usually don't have time to make all of my wonderful big ideas that I'd love to do, but we always have to make a loaf of bread. Muffins are kind of a big one. Oh, and that's too, with bread, we do make bread throughout the week. I have a Zorjirushi bread machine, and the bread breakers have figured out a super easy, very consistent, mill it quick, pop it in. I can pop it in in about six minutes, the ingredients into the bread machine, turn it on about two and a half hours later, then I have fresh bread, which works if I pop it in the machine in the morning, then we can have fresh bread for lunch. If I pop it in overnight and put a timer on, then I can have fresh bread for breakfast or just for the next day. That works good when we do a cinnamon raisin bread for breakfast. We like that with cream cheese on it. Now Joseph has also taken over a bit and he is our main bread maker because it only takes six minutes to pop it in. So it is very simple for him to pull it out while mom's still doing something with the little ones and pop in the bread for the day. And soon we're gonna let Olivia step up and have her start making our bread as well. We probably make that loaf of bread hmm, maybe two to three times a week as the week goes on. And it used to, it's funny, when we used to start making that bread, like long time ago, it was just Daddy and me and Joseph and Olivia. We would make that one loaf of bread for the whole week. That was great, but that doesn't work anymore. Now I can make that one loaf of bread and they can eat all of it 
almost in a single meal. We don't have bread constantly around here, but, and I don't usually ever get time to freeze it. So I make that loaf of bread and then we eat almost all of it. And then there's a little chunk left over. Some people get that as a snack or maybe a side. Maybe I can squeeze it into a couple people getting a little slice of toast at a side of a salad or something like that. I have to make that bread a lot. So we do do the main bread often, maybe, yeah, I'd say probably like three times a week is normal, but I have a helper, Joseph, and so that helps. And then we do our big bake days where we make muffins and rolls and things like that and stick them in the freezer. One other idea I do is when I'm just not having time for a bake day, but I really need to get some wheat in their bodies. It helps us stay well and lots of other great benefits from the freshly milled flour is that I will do one of those bread products for dinner because I usually cook dinner for about an hour every evening. My kids play outside and it's fun and no waddles around and so that's enjoyable. So I am um, like the other night this week we made pancakes for dinner. We don't always do a breakfast for dinner. I think my husband would like that one more often. It was a popular hit. We made pancakes and so then we have a little bit left over. They actually ate so many pancakes that we had hardly left hardly any left but enough to stick in the freezer. We just make a bunch, freeze a bunch and then hope that lasts us until our next chance to get a bake day. So Join us on our journey this morning. A little clip of my bread. We ate this uh, yesterday. The kids had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I had some toast with jelly. And this was a little bit that was left over, so that was good. This was another day probably, and this was all that was left over. So maybe together between the two, I could come up with another meal, at least of us getting some wheat. This is my bread machine. You can see the name right here and what it looks like up here. I think they might even have a newer version than what I have, the Home Bakery Supreme. Breadbakers figured out a perfect little concoction that you put in those ingredients that only take a few minutes. You can even, you know, set the timer to make it delay for breakfast or pop it immediately and it just makes a perfect loaf every time. And if for some reason it doesn't make a perfect loaf, you can email them and be like, oh no, it was and now it's not. And we went through that when we had kind of a rainy spell and I had to learn how to make bread even when it's rainy outside because it actually affects your dough. But they helped me through that and since then we haven't had um, any problems. Yeah, we like this a lot. Since today is February 2nd, we read Proverbs number 2. What you got, buddy? Who abandons the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God, from her house sinks down to death, and her ways to the land of the departed spirits. None return who go to her, none reach the paths of life. So follow the way of good people and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will inhabit the land, and those of integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the treacherous uprooted from it. So this morning was a little busy getting all the breakfast and the teeth and hair and whatnot and so now I am actually not a robot. I have to take a break. <laughs> so all my little feetsies of my children have come to join me and we'll read our Bible and get centered for the day before we can start our baking. Here is our favorite read aloud book. It is called Hero Tales, a family treasury of true stories from the lives of Christian heroes. It's got lots of missionary stuff. I totally, whenever we read this one, we always come away with something inspiring and encouraging and wow, somebody was brave. So Ben, why was Hudson Taylor cool? What did he do? Um, because he was cool because he made 800 people on the mission for the Chinese people. Yeah, he was a good man, huh? He did something bold and brave and changed the world. Alright, so I told you guys it only takes me six minutes to take to make the bread. We're actually going to time Joseph and see how long it takes. So I'm guessing six still. That's how long I remember it used to take me. I'm going to go with five. Oh, he's going to go with five. We're going to put a little timer on and we'll tell you how long it actually takes. Here's the timer. Just clock 
the time. It was counting down from six minutes. So the child actually made it in four minutes, basically flat. Nice work. <laughs> so in another um, two hours and 33 minutes, we will have a fresh loaf of bread for our lunch. All right, we are all suited up in our aprons all the way down the line and ending with cute little pigtail girl. Hey guys, so we are now gonna make rolls next, which we actually make the rolls the same way we make from the bread. We use the same recipe, and it's really just water, oil, honey, salt, flour, and yeast. It's just real basic, but we're going to, instead of just making, we made one loaf of bread, we're gonna make a triple batch of rolls, and that's kinda of how we do it. So, the first thing we do, I actually got these out of the freezer since I just bought that huge bag of it. Normally I just have my little containers, but since I'm trying to use up the freezer stuff, we're gonna use this. I think this guy, my mill, can actually hold eight cups, but it's been getting a little older, so I might only let it hold a little bit less. We'll see if it starts getting a little frustrated. But all you do is get into that, there it is. And this is, um, let's see, this is hard red meat that I'm using. All right, so we turn it on. Always turn it on first. You got your measuring, one cup measuring cup, and just dump it in the top. I just turn the mill off. You just wait till it cools down, pop it out, pop it open. There's supposed to be this little guy. Sometimes he falls out, not a big deal. I'll just retake this little guy and reattach him back up there. And I've only made part of my flour. So um, I actually just made five cups. I just didn't want it to get jammed today for you. So I just made five. Like I said, it can really do eight, but. If I push it to nine, I'm going to have a jammed mill on my hands. So, all right, we're going to do that one more time and get our full amount of flour. All right, so we just finished milling that second batch because since we're making a triple batch of rolls, it uses a lot of flour. So again, we're going to pop it out, pop it open. The little guy stayed intact this time. And sometimes too, you can just undo that guy right here and it might get a little extra flour. I'll just push it away and I'll just uh, pour the rest of my flour in here so I've got all my flour here ready to go. Now the way I make rolls, now a long time ago I used to make these by hand. I did. I would, um, what's the word? Knead. I would knead it all together on the counter but again I only had you know a one-year-old and a three-year-old and we needed some fun stuff to do so it's like play-doh you know that's what people did in the old days they played with dough. <laughs> So now I don't have time to do that all the time. So what I have here, I got a couple years ago, is this bad boy. It really helps in the kitchen. Let's see, this guy is called the Assistant Original. It is something that Bread Beckers recommends. Again, that's where I learned to cook. And um, it's been, it needs the dough for you. So um, you take out all its extra parts here. It does have two bowls it comes with. It comes with a white bowl that must be dirty because we made cookies the other night. But this guy, um, it's got that little thing right there. You're just going to lock it in place on top of here. This is how you use the assistant. All right, and it flops in. Then um, this is another part of the assistant. You pull this little knob up, pull it forward. And I don't know if you can let them see, it just kind of goes in that hole. So I'm putting this little nail right here in this hole. I'm gonna get over closer, maybe. You wanna show them? There you go. And it locks in, perfect. And then this guy right here goes into this first little hole right here, like that. And he'll kind of wiggle around, and this guy will wiggle around. And once he gets going, it will try to push flour over the edge. So you pull it forward and you'll lock it in place. But to begin with, you leave it unlocked so it totally scrapes the walls. All right, so our ingredients for this guy is water is first, hot water. Okay, so pop over here. I just turn on some tap water, nothing fancy. Reach up in here and get my 
glass one that we usually only use it for water, so it's almost always clean. And measure it out. And again, if you want these recipes, um, look for the link below in the description box. It is a $6 book, so. But I want them to get credit. So there's four. And I'll do a little bit more than that. And eyeball it correctly. Perfect. Alright, so we need our water. And then, let's see, I'm going to get this guy. We need our oil. Again, I like to use that oil from Red Records for, from, I think it's from Greece. So, extra good, yummy stuff. Alright, so we put it on a tripod seat, but it'll be a little more still for you. The next thing we add is honey, so there's really not a whole lot of uh, extra ingredients. And if you hear that sound that just went off, it is the bread machine. It was on a warm setting, it just started kneading the bread dough for me. So that one's kneading it for itself, and then this guy is going to knead my rolls for me. So honey next, and I like to use raw honey. Um, this one's a bakery's honey, baker's honey. I have liked to use sage and stuff in the past, so it's just got a little too crazy pricey. I think they were lower glycemic if you want to. If you need that kind of thing, um, you could go for the extra expense if they still even have it. Sometimes they didn't even sell it. It was it's not available. Okay, so after the honey, we do salt. Again, my real salt. So salt next. All right, then I might give this a little whirl. Um, the way you use this guy, if you look down here, there's an on and off switch on the left, and on the right, it controls the speed. So try to make sure they're both, this one's controlled to the left. If this one is already on, it's gonna start really too fast. So we're gonna leave it on, the lowest one, and this one we're gonna switch to the right, just one little notch to turn it on. that's mixed up I'm gonna add my flour a little bit at a time so I'll leave it turned on but I'll leave it turned on low and kind of just gradually mix it in and then we'll finish off once it's twirling and stuff you'll see me grab the yeast and I usually do a little extra than they say because I like it nice and fluffy so I do probably about one and a half times of what the recipe calls for real quick and just say I also can turn this assistant on and I can walk away which is kind of a cool thing I can also turn it on for like five minutes it will cut itself off 
and then um, it'll just rise naturally, which is what you want it to do. It's the next step of the roll. So you make all the ingredients and then you're just gonna let it rise for about 45 minutes or whenever you get a chance to get back to it. Because whenever you get back to it, you can just punch it down. Sometimes I let it go so long, it just starts overflowing almost out of the bowl. Um, but that's okay because we're just gonna shape it into rolls next. So we're just gonna punch it back down and uh, move on. So here is, let me show you the timer real quick. Right here's the knob, I'm gonna turn it on here and then I might crank it up, but the first knob, the first little click right here is on and then it kind of has, um, if you can see, it has minutes after that, they go up to 12 minutes. So that'll cut off immediately with the timer. So on is one click and then I can turn it, um, you know, I don't know, four, six minutes, something like that. I can adjust the speed if I want to, go faster or not. Here's a little peek at it. It's gonna do the work, which is awesome. So it will knead your bread. It will just sit here and rise. I don't have to, I can just come back to it in like a 45 minutes, an hour, maybe longer, and then deal with it some more. I wanted to also point out as my bread machine is making my bread, it's on knead, two minutes and seven seconds here. It's kneading for a little while. Um, a good step if you open it up, sometimes it gets a little clogged on the sides here. So if you just grab your knife and squish it around, that is really the only time I do any maintenance. Sometimes I forget and it just is a little crusty on the sides. Not a big deal. But if you can remember while you're in the kitchen anyway, just do that. So you can see it's kneading my dough. Here is muffins on uh, the Bread Baker recipe. It's actually on page 36. But there is actually, I like their muffins, but this is the one recipe. I actually put this other thing in here. I actually make muffins from this page and it is terribly dirty and got tons of notes on the side, but this is how we actually, most of the time make muffins because they're a little bit sweeter than the Bread Becker ones. And so I can share this recipe. I have actually no idea. I printed it off from somewhere many years ago on the internet. I'll be happy to give you the recipe in the description box. And um, you can just make all kinds of things. So we just pick and choose. Let's go see what the kids pick. Hey Mitchell, what kind of muffins are you gonna make? I'm gonna make blueberry. Blueberry, Ansley? I'm gonna make, um, Chocolate. Cherry. Cherry. <laughs> cherry. Dark, dark uh, cherries. Okay, she's going to make some cherry ones. I'm going to make cranberry chocolate. Cranberry chocolate. Awesome. We'll try to make cranberry chocolate. Chocolate was actually the one thing our Walmart pickup order was left off of. So, I don't, we don't really have chocolate, <laughs> but um, Joseph's trying to concoct something. So, we'll see what he comes up with. So, to make the muffins, we're going to use this soft white wheat. And over here, let's look at the recipe here. This is the single batch, dozen muffins. 24, 36 muffins. And the way I do it is it tells you right here, it says four and a half cups of flour for 36 muffins. But in parentheses, I always write my recipes in amount of grain cups used, but it's different. Because one cup of grain can yield about one and a half cups of flour. This three cups of grain is going to make three batches of muffins, so I might make, eh, let's go for nine, we'll see. Okay, so we're going to get our stuff in our muffin bowls, and then my mixers are all ready. You saw their good skills just a minute ago. So since each uh, bowl is going to get three batches of muffins, we're going to go with that 36 36 recipe and it gets three teaspoons of baking soda. So we're gonna start here. Three teaspoons, it's a math lesson here. Three teaspoons is the same as how many tablespoons? Anybody know? One, two. What is it? One. One tablespoon, so we need three teaspoons or something, we can just use one tablespoon. All right, so baking soda it is. All right, Mitchie. Carefully dump it in your bowl. Beautiful. Next child, please. Yes, you can, but you have to put your cup in. All right, so now he's got something to mix. <laughs> Just so funny. Now go slow. There you go. Perfect. Pass it to Mama. Good. Put it in there. Baking powder next, we use this Rumford aluminum free guy. And 
for. Since these are triple batches each, we're going to need four and a half teaspoons, which is the same thing as a tablespoon, and one and a half teaspoons. That's a lot. So, I'm going to do this one, tablespoon, 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 and then you guys can help in a minute. Teaspoon, 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 and then let me get a half one out. Okay, so we got half one too. And then this one you can do then. Yes. That one in yours. Okay. Perfect. You can. Can you do? You can. Here you go, hands. Put it in yours. Good. <laughs> okay, the cool thing about muffins is that they're really, really forgiving. I've made um, two of my three batches of flour so far. So really, all I really need to do, that's a lot, is just dump half in Mitchell's and about half in hers, and then go make the rest of them. Let's just do that, Mickey. Is it half of that? Uh, yeah. All right, so here's Ansley getting her flour. Now I'm gonna go make Ben the rest of his. Okay, so a cool thing is I just ran out of my hard, nope, my soft white flour. It got to the bottom of the bucket and I needed one more cup of grain. So the cool thing about muffins, because they're so forgiving, just throw in a cup of some other grain. I had the other one over there, hard red wheat, so I just threw a cup of hard red wheat in there. You won't notice. Pancakes are also super forgiving. You can just kind of throw whatever in there and they'll make a pancake. All right, we've got Ben's flour here. For his batch of muffins. Dump it in. We've got our stirrers here. We added the fruit. Mitchell got two cups of blueberries. Ben got two cups of cranberries. <laughs> we might switch Ansley's cherry idea to a banana one. We also did two and a fourth cups of sugar. If you noticed, ours is actually brown. There it is. It is called Sucanaut, which stands for sugar cane natural. So some of our, if you ever see our icing, it's gonna be darker. You can see it is brown. But I don't know, it's what Redbecca recommends and we think it's a little bit healthier. I don't know, I don't really typically have white sugar in my house. I think we all know it's not good for us, so not that we don't eat it, still eat it, but try not to let it in the house. Um, okay, so each bowl also got three eggs. That was a little bit messier than I thought, but um, we, made, we did it, they got to participate. So a messy little cook will turn into a good helper later on, so we'll, it's worth the mess for now. I also did a cup of oil. And I'll show you our mixture so far. They're still a little dry. So our little trick here that we do is we just start dumping in applesauce. And it doesn't really even seem to matter how much. They still seem to cook up pretty good. So let me show you how dry they are. Is Ben, he is stirring up his cranberry. Here's Ansley's. Hers will get a lot more moist once we add her bananas. And then here's Mitchell's blueberry one. And again, they're all gonna need some applesauce to just make it a better consistency. We did not have any chocolate in this ha in the house and so I took some cocoa powder, maybe about three-fourths of a stick of butter, and then I put in some sucanat, mix it up. Let's taste. Let's see, melting did the you butter. Taste it? Yeah, it's kind of like dark chocolate. Can I taste it, Mama? <laughs> I'm gonna do a little finger taste. It is kind of like dark chocolate. Alright, so we're trying something new. Who knows if it'll work out or not, but we shall find out. Chocolate sauce into our cranberry chocolate muffins. Looks yummy for our chocolate. I caught them red handed here. They're both getting some in their mouth. It's got raw eggs, you silly kiddos. Oh, she's frozen. <laughs> she's frozen. No more eating. Okay, that one's at least chocolate. All right, let's mix it up and see how it looks. Okay, buddy? 